Hello. Hello, hello, hello. It is so strange to be here in four squares today. But it's so very, great. Very strange. And it's very strange to, to do this in the evening. Like normally I'm like I'm in it's morning time and like I'm thinking about like everything I've got to do afterwards. And now I'm just like, we're done. Done for the day. I don't have to do anything else. <laughs> Yay. Well, today it's Leah and me, like normal, and then we have two very special guests for our evening National Library Week Lattes with Librarians show. Um, we've got Becky and Shannon. Becky has been here before, but Shannon has not. Should we all go around and introduce ourselves like we have in the past? Yeah. All right, well, I'm Allison. I'm the Technical Services Librarian for Fairfield County, um, which means I get to catalog process and see all the brand new books, which is awesome. <laughs> I'll go next. I'm Becky, Becky Shade. I'm the director of the Fairfield County District Library. And I'm the one who said, hey, Leah and Allison, for National Library Week, can we do lattes, but in the evening um, and still drink caffeine and do this? It'll be great. <laughs> so thank you, guys. <laughs> and I'm, oh, go ahead, Leah. Um, I'm Leah. I'm the coordinator of adult services. I get to buy all of the adult books. I, I'll, I'm really only responsible for ordering the nonfiction, but I, I, I get a sneak peek at all the fiction that's coming out too. <laughs> and I'm Shannon Keys. I'm the youth services coordinator at the library, so I get to do all the kids stuff, all the fun. Hi, Tara. And programs. Hi, Tara. Well, I'm very excited to be here this evening, and I feel like I need to introduce a special guest that we also have with us that I didn't show you guys before. This is my Fabio. Can you see it in the light? It's the ALA poster for, from I guess, like 1997. Um, ALA had the Celebrity Read campaign. It still does. It's been going on since the 80s, where celebrities kind of like, they don't get paid and they just kind of sign up or volunteer or whatever to be on a poster advertising just reading and they get to pick the book that they read and um this campaign i think we all know posters from it the one that i remember the best is from when i was a teenager or at least reading teen books at our library here at fairfield county we had the frodo poster up it was elijah wood as frodo with his big hairy hobbit feet on this tree branch and that's the one that I remember the best. But there's this Fabio one that I got from outofprint.com. And I got it because of how much Leah and I talked about romance book covers and Fabio and just all these, you know, so much that happened on lattes in the past two years we talked about that made me feel like I had to get this shirt. And since uh, it's National Library Week, I thought it was an appropriate time <laughs> to wear it. <laughs> That shirt is amazing. Like, I don't know whether to swoon or rip my bodice. Like, I know. I know. Oh. He's reading the book Jaws, by the way. And like I said, you get to pick which one you read. So he chose Jaws. But anyway. Um, it would have been really funny if he would chosen a book that he was on the cover of. That's what I, mean, I, I kind of assumed it was going to be a romance, and it right? wasn't. Um, and I did send Mary a link, if you want to post it in the uh, comments, that is just a link to an article collecting some of the library reads, or library read, celebrity read posters. Um, so if Mary wants to post that in the chat, that would be awesome. Oh, wow. Well, and I do remember that uh, Frodo read poster that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I It was when the two couples on the, the library floor. somewhere. We tried hard enough, honestly. Probably. <laughs> that one. Yeah. 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 It was. I, 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 stood there in that, I stood there in that teen section on the second floor and I would, you know, look at the books that were on like those two, it was just like two shelves of them. Um, and that's where the poster was at the time. <laughs> Yeah, when there was um, Edward Cullen from Twilight, yes. uh, there was a Robert Pattinson uh, one of, of those. And we had so many teens like request to get it when we were done with it. And I wanted to be like, so that's not really how it works. Like, we're not going to be done with it until you're like 28. And you're not going to want it anymore, really. Um, but I would have like, I'd come in on Monday morning and like three staff members, they were like, these three girls would like that poster when you're done with it. I'm like, I, I, 
I, I'm not going to be done with it until you're old. Like, <laughs> yeah, those were great. great. That's a great campaign, though. Still going strong. Yeah, yeah. And then you have there's like a big movie franchise, like like the Frodo one. Mm -hmm. They seem to like capture those people and get them to 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 pose with books. Yes, yeah, I wonder if there's like a Marvel. Maybe there's like a Marvel. Oh, I bet there is. Or something. Yeah, I think uh, Captain Marvel has one. If I if I right. either that or I'm making it up in my head. Yeah. I can imagine her doing one. It would yeah. be awesome. Sounds <laughs> good. Very cool. I remember the Princess Bride one. Oh. Yeah. And I think they're reading the Princess Bride because that was a, a book first. So mm -hmm. probably. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. That book and that movie are just fantastic. I love they them. Are. They are. Are they redoing it? I thought I heard something about that, like redoing it with a new. Maybe that was just an internet rumor. I don't know. I don't know. Two things about that. During the beginning of the pandemic, they did one of that was one of the celebrity things that they did where different they different celebrities filmed different scenes. It was like a real thing. And then I think it was on um that app that lasted like a month, Key Beat Queen. They won't be over the queue. Yes, yes, um, yes. Okay. And I think I could be wrong. Some of these details are fuzzy, but I remember that different celebrities were just they filmed different scenes and you know all genders all people didn't you know they just kind of passed the story around from group to group to group and i thought that sounded pretty cute and fun but then i also think i do remember hearing something about them doing uh like an actual remake because i think people mo mostly just get upset when they hear about that yeah i don't know how i feel about that yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. but no at any rate yeah. Oh, that's a great, that's a great t-shirt. I love well, thank it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to have this opportunity to wear it. I, I wasn't sure when, when it would come up, but I knew today was the day. It's yeah. awesome. Perfect. <laughs> Should we jump into some book talk? Yeah. Yeah. yeah All right. I was looking at my, my list of, of books that I was like, Ooh, stuff that I'm looking forward to coming out. And it's like, mostly romances so i must be in that kind of mood but it's very appropriate to have fabio today <laughs> so what are you looking forward to um i've got mixed feelings about um this one okay. so i want to i want to give it a shot i want to give it a fair chance but i'm very leery of books that take like characters that i know and love and reuse them but at the mm. same time it could be cool um it's the murder of mr wickham M oh. remember mr wickham he's the bad guy in um pride and prejudice mm -hmm. and he's in this mystery uh mr knightley and emma are throwing a house party filled with austin's beloved characters when wickham is murdered mm. and of course nearly everyone in the house is a suspect and it is up to two young guests to find out who done it. So it's, mm -hmm. I have to say, I'm not sad about Wickham being murdered. So mm -hmm. I will give this one a try. <laughs> it's kind of fun. like an Agatha Christie take on uh, Pride and Prejudice. I love it. It's, uh, Claudia Gray is, is the author. So mm. Interesting. Interesting. Now I've been in a romance mood lately, but because I've been watching Bridgerton. Oh, um, yeah. so. <laughs> well, if you're still in a Bridgerton mood, um, there's the book Reputation by Lex Croucher. It says it's the perfect blend of Bridgerton and Jane Austen. So mm -hmm. how can you go wrong? Um, it's a Regency area romantic comedy is how they describe it. Mm -hmm. So that sounds perfect. That sounds um, fun. Georgiana Ellers is spending the summer with her aunt. Normally bookish and sheltered, Georgiana meets Fr Francis, who introduces her to Regency's aristocracy for anything but proper. So that sounds like it could be fun. I'm gonna so you're gonna need to text me that title later so that I can get on hold. <laughs> Has anyone read Bridgerton? Um, yeah, so it's just true confession time for anyone who doesn't know this about me. I read a lot of romance novels. Um, it's kind of like 
eating a lot of candy bars. I do that mm -hmm. too. Um, so yeah, I read them years ago. I love uh, Julia Quinn, the author. Mm -hmm. I love her. I think she's a fabulous mm -hmm. romance writer. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think they're a great series and um, had read them a long, long time ago. I've reread them and I've reread them since the series came out. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And uh, that's what I have heard. And I, cause I, so I know somebody else who, I don't, it's somebody I follow online. I don't know her, um, but she has read them before many, many times. She reads and rereads them and just says that they're so good. And, um, and that especially in the second season that it's not that the second season wasn't good, but just, you might like it better as a book. Um, I would not. So I like everything better as a book to be fair. Mm -hmm. So number one, mm -hmm. um, unless, unless you're talking about Nicholas Sparks, in which case I do like the movie better. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just true. I mean, right? I mean, he's not going to see this. It's fine. I, I, mean, I doubt it. Yeah, we gotcha. I mean, um, so season two, I agree. Uh, it's it's a little rushed, and I did I did enjoy the book better. Um, I that being said, though, you know what? I really do like the show. Um, I'm still I'm watching it. I'm probably like on episode three. I think. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make me want to watch the entire thing all at once. Although to be fair, like I don't have time to do that anyway. So mm -hmm. if I did, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, so, eh. um, but I did. I like I like them better as books anyway. Mm -hmm. Like so, I, I'm probably not the person to ask that question. Okay. Um, but I definitely think it's worth watching. Um, yeah. I was excited that it came out. Um, and I will say kudos to the producers for turning, I mean, like, especially I think when those books were written, um, romance genre, I mean, it's, it's not a very diverse genre at all. And it's doing better and getting better now, but they have taken what is not, a, I mean, by the author's own admission, not a very diverse series and really turned it on its head and i and i think that to me is really cool to see it is i really enjoyed the first season a lot but i'm almost like wondering if i should i have um i actually own them there was like a bundle deal on amazon one day so i own the the ebooks of i think the first four and mm -hmm. so i was kind of thinking maybe i should just commit and read those before continuing on with the show and you know what i think you'll read them really fast like you'll go through them so quickly that like it Mm -hmm. it, it'll take longer to watch the show than it will. Be. <laughs> yeah, I think at least. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Romance novels are like candy. You just gobble them up. <laughs> okay, can we talk 100%. about... Can, I have to ask, are any of you watching the Outlander series? No. You don't even want to get me started. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I can't. Like, it's I'm too real perturbed. <laughs> real perturbed this season. Like, I feel... As you say, the book is always better. So mm -hmm. I will just leave it at that. We won't bore people, but anyone who wants to talk about this season, come find <laughs> me. <laughs> She's got things to say, and she That's needs somebody to say them too. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> My trouble, like, any, who, who is a, a bees fan out there? Who's reading the bees? I can't, like, here's my problem with Outlander, everybody, everybody out there in the world. I love Diana Gabaldon. She's an amazing writer, but man, oh man, like you can't like release one book every five years and think I'm going to remember what happened. And it's not like I can just go back and read the last book. I've got to read the last eight books you wrote that are averaging like 2000 pages each at this point. Like yeah. literally I can take the entire time that you spend in between writing books, just rereading your novels. And like, I don't have time for that. I thought I was doing good because I started this summer rereading them and so that I would be able to read these when it came out. I just started written in my own hearts. <laughs> oh, but, wow. Yeah. Like it, it is taking me like a month to read each one, which, well, I'm listening it's to good, it. really. Yeah. I'm a listening month? That's that. nothing, really. So that, that takes a little bit longer. <laughs> They are. One of them was like 58 hours. I'm just like, yeah. So getting that in in a month's time, I feel pretty good about. But um, 
but yeah, I so I'm only get I'm up to number eight now. So I'll be able to read these when I finish the one that I just started today. But it's just like oh, there, there's so much in them. And like you said, you can't just reread the last one. The plot is so in, intricate and like people from like way back when suddenly reappear and you're just yeah. I don't have so the memory. What I'm hearing is that if I'm ever going to read this series, which I never have, I just need to wait till they're all out and spend like that year reading and them start to finish. Yeah. And totally worth it. Like an amazing oh. series. I read okay. verse three and then man, oh man. Waited and then. Yeah. And I wanted to, so Mary in the comments says I was watching, but got turned off a couple of seasons ago. And I will say like, I know what happens in those books and that I stopped watching like after season one, I just couldn't do it. Like, some things are too painful to watch, and I just couldn't. So I hear you. I, you know, I, I don't watch the show. <laughs> I can enjoy the show as the show, like as a separate entity from the books, until this season. This season, yeah. they crossed the line, and I got I got things to say about it. <laughs> what season are you making? You wish I had like. <laughs> what what book are they up to? Um. They're doing a weird hodgepodge of um, Echo and the Bone and the one before that. Um, um, a Breath of Snow and Ashes. They're like, there's a weird mix of some. They're not staying true to the story. But they're not. Okay, I wondered. Um, so it's like things are happening all out of order, um, which I whatever I, I can do with a little bit of that but the, what they did declare this season is unforgivable unforgivable okay there. don't spoil don't spoil for anybody no for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh bridgerton okay okay yeah bridgerton <laughs> definitely definitely Anyone else reading anything good I just finished the Newberry, this year's Newberry winner. It was really good. What was it? It's a, the last Quintista. It's a sci-fi, which is Ooh. unusual for the Newberry. Yeah. And uh, so it takes place, the, the last storyteller will ask it. So it's, she's Mexican American and she wants to be a storyteller, but all of a sudden it's comets coming out of nowhere and they have to get off the planet. <laughs> So, it, yeah, it goes from there. That sounds very interesting. I like that it's sci-fi. I feel like I'm probably making this up, but it seems like a lot of times it's like historical fiction or just something that has, I hate saying this, but something that sounds boring. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's beautifully written, um, but just that sounds like you could hand it to somebody yeah and like sell it in another way. Whereas sometimes the winner of any literary award, you kind of have, sometimes you have to sell it as it won this award, but that sounds like something you could give to. Yeah. It becomes in the library based on its plot too. <laughs> yeah. A lot of appeal to it for sure. It definitely it read it in a day. It was, I didn't want to put it down. That was good. That was good. Yeah. Say the title of that one again. The Last Quintista. Quintista. Mm -hmm. Quintista. It's Q-U-E-N-T-I-S-T-A. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. That sounds interesting. It was. So they put them to sleep for 300 years, and they're supposed to wake up on this Goldilocks planet, and things don't go according to plan. Cool. Nice. Yeah. It does sound good. It's good. It's good. Goldilocks hmm. planet as in just right? Just right. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, I have, when you talk about uh, sending people to other planets, um, the types of books that I had brought to talk about today, um, I feel like I've read several books lately that are, I feel like they're like pandemic adjacent. There's a lot of books, a lot of books coming out that are about COVID-19 and are about the pandemic or take place during that time because just if you're a writer and you're an author and you're writing books, it, it, we're at the point where you can't really ignore that it happened or it's if you don't want to write about it you might want to set your book in a different time period because if you write realistic fiction then this is what reality is um but the books that i've been encountering and really enjoyed have been books that are 
maybe they are about a pandemic, but not ours, or maybe they're about a sci-fi premise that, that it just reminds you of our thing, but it is not exactly that. And I've really been enjoying those because I don't think I'm ready to read just about everything in, that we exactly that we've already gone through. I'm not really sure that that sounds entertaining to me. Um, but for example, this month, um, the book uh, Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel comes out, and she's the author of Station Eleven. Who I think I think a lot of people have read that book now, a lot more since the pandemic. Um, and so this book, it's not very long. Um, it spans 1912 to 2200. And um, there's a time travel element to it. There's, you know, a few different places and people that you follow. Um, but in some of those um, time periods, the moon has been colonized. And so there's a, and there's also, there's a version, I think her name's Olive in the book, but um, she basically is like a stand-in for Emily St. John Mandel. It's the, I think the 20, 22nd century, sometime in the 2100s, um, an author has written a book, it's very much like Station Eleven, and so she's been asked to speak because there's this other pandemic, and so she's doing this tour, this book tour, with her shows, and her book's been made into a show, which is insane, as Station Eleven, so she figures in on that, but she lives on the moon, um, and so she has to get off the planet before this next pandemic gets worse, all these things, um, but like I said, there's also a time travel element, which is pretty cool. And it's not all that long. Um, and so if you enjoyed Station Eleven, there are threads that run throughout the drawback to Station Eleven and also to The Glass Hotel, which is another book she wrote a couple years ago, which takes place with some, some of the same people. So um, I recommend that if you have interest in any of those things. And again, it's not our pandemic. You're not reading it saying, yeah. I do remember that. You're connecting to it kind of in a slightly different way, but she's still you're still kind of processing the same events. And I just, that works better for me than the, Yep, I do remember. It feels like only yesterday. Um, so I wanted to bring that up when you talked about uh, trying to get off the planet. <laughs> I know, I love Station Eleven, so I'm really excited that I have that one on my uh, to read list. And like, I don't frequently put like newly published books on there mm -hmm. because. I have such a long list of things mm -hmm. that are already published that I need to read. Mm -hmm. um, but that is like, I, I've enjoyed her book so much that I, and that look sounds like such an interesting concept. Like, I think we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get through it. I think like one reason why I don't like putting brand new books on hold either is because they always are going to have more holds. And can I really get to it in the three week period? I think you yeah. will be able to do this in the three week period. Cause it's also not super long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That one sounds really good. And yeah, I, I'm looking forward to reading that one after I get through my <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, I have I have taken breaks and read like a couple short books and then gone back to Outlander. I, I, I have had to do that a couple of times because but yes, that's a lot on my <laughs> Outlander list. <laughs> That's crazy. I know, I mean, it's a hundred percent the re like I just can't. It's yeah. And I'm I'm sad. Like I'll see it on the shelf now. Like we'll have a copy on the Lucky Day shelf or something. And I'm like, there's yeah. bees. Can't <laughs> read it. Like, <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. There's a YA book that I'm looking forward to. It's it, they 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 it was time travel was what they. Um, but on it, but it's not really. Um, well, it's more it's more Groundhog's Day. Um, <laughs> it's a YA book. It says "See You Yesterday." It's called "See You Yesterday" by Rachel Lynn Solomon. Um, Barrett Bloom is first day of college, and everything goes wrong. She's <laughs> it in class. She watches an interview, and she sets a frat on fire. Like her day just can't get worse. But the next day, she wakes up. And it's the first day again. Um, and but she meets this person, Miles, who for him it's the first day, but it's not his first day being the first day again. He's been stuck on the first day for months, so they're both stuck on the first day, but they've been there different lengths of time. So I'm just kind of very curious as to how that will work itself out and I like the I like the groundhog's day <laughs> element to it because that's just fun. So 
but I like the title too. See you yesterday. <laughs> that that premise just to throw this out there, the movie Palm Springs, um, which came out a couple years ago with Andy Samberg and the girl whose name I forget, but she was in How I Met Your Mother and season two of Fargo. Uh, I believe she oh, might yeah. have been like the mother. And anyway, um, she there she and Andy Samberg are at a wedding. And they keep reliving the same day over and over again and the day of the wedding. And Andy Samberg has been there for a really long time. Mm-hmm. Like he has no idea how long, but we follow her just as she begins to relive that over and over again. So just if you're, if that premise sounds appealing, that movie is on, I know it's on Hulu, but it's probably other places too. And I know it's at the library. <laughs> what is it called again? Palm Springs. I was like, pineapple? I'm like, that's not right. right. Palm, Palm, Palm Springs. They're at a wedding in Palm Springs and okay. have to keep attending it over and over and over again. <laughs> Looks like her name, according to Mary, is Kristen Miliotti. Thank you. Well, I've got something that I'm looking forward to reading. It's actually um, like the seventh book in a series. Um, so maybe not the place to jump in if you haven't read this series yet. Um, but it, it, it is a good place to talk about this series. So um, there's an author named Seanan McGuire. Uh, and the new book in this series is called Where the Drowned Girls Go. It's a fantasy series. Um, the series is called the Wayward Children series. And... Uh, what that series is about, it's a story of Eleanor West's School for Wayward Children, which is a boarding school for children who come home from portal fantasy worlds and can't adjust to their new lives. Um, so this is, like I said, that the drowned, Where Drowned Girls Go is the seventh book in this series. Um, but the other, the six books that come before it, very short, um, very accessible, um, available on Libby, which um, makes them even easier to get. Um, and they're just very, very readable. I don't know, you pick them up and you can go through them pretty quickly. Um, so the newest one is available now. So if you're looking for a new series of um, kind of short-ish fantasy novels to be able to get through, um, definitely look at Wayward Children. Um, I, and I'm sure, <laughs> sure I've talked about this before on the show, potentially this series before on the show. Um, Shauna McGuire is the pseudonym of uh, Mira Mira Grant. Grant. (laughs) (laughs) They've heard me talk about it in case you haven't. I have definitely talked about Mira Grant in the feed series. Right, who is one of my absolute favorite uh, fantasy, sci-fi, end of the world type authors. Um, if you need more killer mermaids in your life, um, Mira Grant is the person to look toward. Uh, just, just say, it. right? Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look up the title of that, the, of her killer mermaid book, but that into the drown deep actually is what I think it's called. It really um, <laughs> what's that? That was really good. Yeah. It was really good. It was really good. <laughs> And she wrote my absolute hands down favorite zombie trilogy. Yes. And as somebody who reads a lot of zombie novels, so that's like my fun fact that nobody knows about me. I'm addicted to zombie novels. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> like, you wouldn't know that from looking at me maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but the News Flesh trilogy by Mira Grant, the best, the best zombie apocalypse series out there. Uh, and Mary Grant, also Sean and McGuire. So there you go. Good. I always forget that that series is called News Flesh, and I call it mm-hmm. a Feed series because Feed is the title of the first right. one. Yeah. I always call it by the wrong name. Yeah. I'm like the worst librarian ever. <laughs> I can't remember titles or names. Like, and titles and authors' names are like the thing I need to know. So. You're the librarian who is red. You don't need to know any of those things. You just need to know how to find them. Exactly. That's and what makes a good library. Wonderful cataloging skills I'm able to get there. So to answer Mary's question, what about zombie movies? Do you like those too? No, those scare the crap out of me and I can't watch those. <laughs> nope, nope. 
Mm -mm. So it does sound like uh, Shaun of the Dead and like Zombieland. Like that's the level of zombie movie um, that I can deal with. Like actual like uh, like Romero, George Romero zombie movies. No, no, I don't. I don't like that at all. I don't care for that. Mm -mm. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) I'm gonna go outside at night at some point. So. Mary confessed that she's a librarian who doesn't like to read, which I would argue is not true because you love reading graphic novels. That is true. They are, they are, that is reading. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) I have a book that I put on my list just for the title Mm. that I, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be a fun, fun read. Um, it's called, this is not a book about ben- Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> oh, I know this one. Once, you, once you've something. seen that title, you don't forget it. The Joy of Loving Something, Anything, Like Your Life Depends on It by Ta- Tabitha Carvin. Um, the description is, most of us leave our teenage heartthrobs in our childhood bedrooms, trading them for more serious concerns like relationships, kids, and jobs. But when new mom Tabitha discovers a passion for Benedict Cumberbatch, she soon realizes her obsession isn't really about the actor at all, but the joy of frivolous interest and the sense of self that can come from them. Part memoir, part self-help, this one will empower you to rediscover your own obsessions. And yes, Google image search that uh, Sherlock actor too. (laughs) It sounds like he comes up a lot in the book, <laughs> and while well, she swears it's not about him, <laughs> a, a lot because he's her obsession. Mm-hmm. So, is it nonfiction? Yes, mm-hmm. it's nonfiction. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but again, I have to read this book because of the title. Yeah, a lot great of nonfiction title. is like very specific. Like you know, if you're traveling or if you're into cooking, I'm like this one is just one of those ones that I'm just going to read because I think it's going to be a fun read. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a funny self-help book. It sounds good. (laughs) That's great. My next one is a historical fiction. Ruta Sepetti has a new one out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of historical fiction. Um, This one takes place in Romania, Mm -hmm. and it's after um, the Iron Curtain lifts. So it's a lot about... Um, what happens behind the Iron Curtain and then it's like kind of Eastern European secrets and things that we, we're seeing more of now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, a lot of that kind of stuff. Really good. Things you never hear about. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, that sounds good. I heard I heard good things about that. Yeah, she writes really good stuff. I Must Betray You is the name of this one. Because you don't know who you can trust, you know. All mm-hmm. the- those dictatorships behind the Iron Curtain. Um, The next one that I have, I don't have a good segue for that. You know, I'm all about, Leah, I'm all about attempting a segue, but no matter how much of a stretch it is. Um, But the next book that I have is, it comes out, it doesn't come out, I believe, until June, but I've been reading, um, like, I like reading these advanced copies of things that I get on NetGalley. Um, and so it's called The Measure, and the author is Nikki Ehrlich, and um, it's actually a debut novel, but it's another one that falls in into that category I was talking about. The premise of this book is that one day, everyone in the entire world wakes up, and everyone over the age of 21 wakes up and has a box on their doorstep, and in the box is a length of string, and that length of string represents the length of their life. And so you open up your box, you see your length of string, And it takes a while for people to figure out what's going on. It takes, you know, people, they do a lot of tests. They kind of narrow things down and they realize that that's what the strings are. Um, They set up a website with different like length calculators so that people can kind of start to figure out, well, what does this length mean? What does this length mean? You kind of watch it unfold. There's several characters that you follow. And so if you choose to open your box, you choose to measure your string, you end up finding out how much time you have left to live. And so I know there have been other books where people can find out when they're going to die. The Immortalists is one of them, but I have never read a book where that is then applied to the entire world, kind of in a a blanket thing. And when you turn 22, a box shows up on your doorstep. Um, And so what this book does in a really cool way is just what would that 
how would that change everything for everybody? Um, if you know you have a short string, not just personally, what choices would you make, but then what choices do a country make? What choices does the world make when it comes to knowing this percentage of your population? What happens when people start quitting their jobs? Because this is not how they want to spend the rest of the time that they have left. There are support groups for people with strings that end in three to five years, support groups for people whose strings end in nine to 10 years. Um, and and just what the, it almost sounds boring, but some of like the bureaucratic stuff that would happen, just what would it mean? Um, and so the book takes place mostly in the, over the course of the first year of that happening. And it's another one where, even though this has nothing to do with reality, um, it, you just, you recognize, you recognize this global event and the, the domino effect that it has on things. It feels very familiar with our experience of the pandemic and it does start the boxes show up in March, wow. in the Mar March of a year. And so I feel like that tie, she's definitely encouraging you to think about maybe the ways we've begun to see the people in our lives and our countries differently based on, and, you know, the way they've handled the pandemic. And so anyway, I it comes out, I believe, in June. It's called The Measure. And I think it would be a really good book club pick because there's just, it's one of those ones where there's a lot of stuff to talk about, but what would you do? How would you, you know? But it also is a really good story. And specifically, well, maybe any of you here, but for Leah, for sure, um, the audio is narrated by Julia Whalen, who is a really oh. excellent narrator. And, um, so, and she, and it, since it's multiple characters, you sometimes want to make sure you have a good narrator who can handle all of them. <laughs> wow. Nice. Very nice. The measure. I'm gonna have to put that on hold. That sounds really interesting. You should. It was. I think it was. Yeah. It was just an interesting premise that I've not encountered before. Mm -hmm. And it was Nikki. What? E R L I C K. Ehrlich. Ehrlich. Yeah. <laughs> and it's N I K K I for Nikki. Cool. That's how I wrote it. I was like, hmm. There you go. Yes. <laughs> I do have one more if we have time. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, I have just started reading the author TJ Klune. Um, I read uh, The House in the Cerulean Sea, which I really enjoyed. Um, if you're a fantasy reader, I think most people would enjoy this story. Um, great, great book. And when you were talking about The Measure of Life, uh, Allison, mm -hmm. I thought, oh my goodness, talk about Allison and her segue. Listen to this description. So this is his next book that I am going to read. Um, it is called Under the Whispering Door. Um, and here's the description. When a, rip oh, when a ripper, when a reaper comes to collect Wallace for, from his own funeral, Wallace begins to suspect he might be dead. And when Hugo, the owner of a peculiar tea shop, promises to help him cross over, Wallace decides he's definitely dead. But even in the death, he's not ready to abandon the life he barely lived. So when Wallace is given one week to cross over, he sets about living a lifetime in seven days. Oh, that's cool. I know. I was like, well, that's interesting that we are like, <laughs> bookends there. Um, so that that one is called Under the Whispering Door uh, by TJ Klune. It's currently out, so you could uh, reserve it already from the library. Um, it's on my to read list personally. Um, just really, you know, I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but it, it really just this cover art. It just is just very attractive. Like you just want to pick it up. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed uh, this really in C book so much that I really want to read this next one. And it just, it reminded me of certain elements of some other uh, books that I've read in the last couple of years that I really enjoyed um, that I'm not going to be able to remember <laughs> in this moment, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> um, like Eddie LaRue, like just that oh, idea yeah. of like measuring your life. And um, oh, what was that book? Oh, man. What was that book? <laughs> I can't even tell you the cover, the color of the cover because I read it digitally. Um, hmm. It doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> I'll think of it when this is done. I'll, I'll think of it when, it, when this is done. Um, there was a librarian, and she got to, like, relive her life and decisions that she made. The Midnight Library. Midnight, yeah. That's it. <laughs> 
were just like elements of different things that I liked. Oh, that's why she wanted us to come up with the title before she told us anything about it. I know, like yeah. nothing. You know, that book. Oh, yeah, that book. Book. oh yeah, I know that one. In this scenario, I'll be the customer, you be the librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but that's the one. Um, so I just, yeah, something I know that I'm going to read next. Um, and just, mm -hmm. I, think, I think it'll be a good one. Um, at least I hope so. We'll see. I'm eager to read that one too. It is on Libby because I get notified. I got notified not mm -hmm. that long ago that I had the audiobook available, but I just couldn't do it at the time. So I released it back and said, you know, send it to me in another month or two. Um, <laughs> yeah. I do love that feature. Uh, yeah. Like, what did you know? It, that is great. It is. Me too. Because then you can kind of place hold with abandon, <laughs> but yes. not feel bad about it, not get, let them get clogged up. And then you can kind of just, well, I'm not in the mood right now, but you know but it'll it, come back to you. And it like keeps reminding you of like, oh, cool, there's this awesome book out there. Because that's one thing, like you throw it on a wish list and like there's always something else that new and fresh, you don't go and look at your wish list, but when it just keeps popping up, like, hey, yes. this is available for you again. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, at some point, the stars are going to align. So for anybody who might not know, um, Libby, the library's uh, ebook digital content um, app, um, if you put an item on hold, when it notifies you that it's available, you can choose to check it out at that point, or you can choose to have it re-delivered later and it'll check back with you and say hey do you want this item now and at that point you can say yes or you can have it re-delivered another time um which is really nice for when you're already reading something or just don't have time right now um, at some point you know my schedule and this book are gonna line up i just know it <laughs> right and it's nice because you can even pick like the range of time notify me after a certain number of days. So if like, I, I don't remember, I got a notification of a hold, maybe like December 8th or something. And I just knew that with Christmas and the things that were happening, it wasn't going to, so I could say like notify me after like enough days that it would be after the holidays. And I don't know, it's just, it's a really cool feature. Mm -hmm. I think you can do it up to like six months. You can, Cause I've done that. I'm just like, I do not have time for this right now. <laughs> You're like, I'm reading all these Outlander books. I can't get notified of anything after Outlander is done. Yeah. <laughs> Your name is Anna Don. I am not listening to you. Exactly. I feel like we didn't get to talk about like, I feel like we could talk for like seven hours. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of good stuff coming out. There is. There's always good stuff. Yeah. Always. Okay. And I feel like, you know, if I, I want patrons to know that they can feel free to like ask for recommendations at the library. Like mm -hmm. we do that. Like we'll give you book recommendations. Really do. A lot of people don't won't ask. Mm -hmm. You know? Um yeah. yeah, we we can we can figure out what you like. We'll find you something that's good. Well, I mean, like I I'll be in like a few different like like well, I'm in a lot of different like Facebook groups and mm -hmm. so we're, and where people some of them like post a picture and it'll be about something else, but there's like a book behind them on the coffee table. And like I'm the one in the comments being like, Oh, what's that book? And then they'll tell me like, Oh, well, if you like that, you know, I'm not gonna try this one, or did you read this? Or you know, that's like what my eyes go to at like any you know, I just I love talking about books and a lot of people who work at the library like that. And so yeah, if any it's harder to get us to stop, I think. <laughs> Like you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's really hard to get us to stop once you get us going. <laughs> True story. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that it for tonight? Unless Does anyone have anything else that they had to share about? Um, um, I have another nonfiction one I'm going to mention just because I didn't talk about many nonfiction. It's called Rogues, True Stories of Grifters, Killers, Rebels, and Crooks by Patrick Radden Keith. Um, it's just like 12 different tales of um, skullduggery and intrigue. That's what they call it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just this, they just tell the story of all these criminals. And I think like with the, you know, the way people love crime podcasts, true crime podcasts, it might have an audience. Um, just stories of no good. <laughs> to no good. I think anytime you can use the word skulldudgery, it's pretty yeah, good. Awesome. Like, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I have one more I can share too. And speaking of nonfiction books, uh, we just got one in called Alias Anna. Mm. And it, it's, oh, it's, I saw that one. Rain. it's written in verse, but it's nonfiction. Um, and it takes place during World War II. And it is written in verse, but it's the story of two sisters uh, from the Ukraine who are kind of touring like between the Russians and the Nazis and uh, their story of how they kind of um, rescue themselves with music. But it's it's very good and very quick. Isn't it amazing how these, like, you know, with whatever is happening in the world now, it's not like that book was published knowing that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Book publication takes months and months, mm -hmm. not years, to happen. That always amazes me when things like that line up. I just think that's uh, just mind blowing. It really yeah. is. It's like yeah. good to know some of that history behind everything mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. Well, that was really good too, Alice, Anna, based on a true story. Mm. And those novels, in, those those books in first do they go so fast because really there's some up blank space on the page. <laughs> yeah. and they pack so much into those poems. Yeah. Like, wow, really good. Um, I'll do one more to nonfiction. This um, is a memoir, and I think it came out last year. It's called Mother Trucker by Amy Butcher. And um, it is Amy Butcher is an Ohio author, so there's that as well. Um, and she... Um, she decides to reach out to one of the only female ice road truckers in Alaska, not on the show Ice Road Truckers. It's made very clear that those aren't real truckers <laughs> or whatever. Um, you know, there's people who do the job who are not on the show and, and that's, that's more what she was getting into. Um, and so she wanted to go shadow, uh, Joy is her name. Um, she just decides to go for a week. She's gonna go back out a couple of times, but she decides to go for a week and kind of tied up in that is She's in this, the author, Amy, is in this relationship um, that is not going well and she suspects it might be abusive and she's just kind of feeling trapped and so she kind of wants to do something. And so she goes to Alaska, she meets Joy and she rides along with Joy for a week. And that is the, the basis of the book is her time with Joy and kind of also reflecting on what's happening in her own life and talking to Joy some about that and also um, just meeting all these people who are very different from Amy, the author who is a liberal arts professor and you know teaches these feminist classes on feminism and things and she just kind of feels like she's a little out of her zone but also connecting with people first few lines of the book it's right there i'm not spoiling anything um a few months after she takes this trip with joy joy actually dies on the road as an ice road trucker and um so this is the only time she gets to spend with her. She doesn't get to go to those other trips, trips that she was going to have. And so that kind of frames everything with this sense of you know what is coming and you know you know how it ends. And um, it just add, it was it was good. <laughs> I really enjoyed it, and I think it could appeal to a lot of a broad audience of people because there's just there's something in there for a lot of different a lot of different people. Even if it's just like, man, what's it like to be a nice road trucker? But I didn't know anything about that. I had to Google. I Googled some of the pictures of like, what is what do those roads look like? Um, and it was a, it just it was a moving it was a moving story, and it wasn't something that I knew anything about, and I didn't know what to expect. But um, it's called Mother Trucker. That was Joy's Instagram handle. Mm -hmm. and, um, so I I, yeah, I heard about that on NPR. They did uh, an episode on it, and it sounded. Yeah to me then but you actually made it sound even more interesting I mean, it's another one that isn't that long which i love a big book but just in contrast to some of the big books we were talking about um you can kind of i don't know sometimes it feels good to sit down and sort of in a weekend yeah accomplish <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Children's books, books are really great for that. That's true. <laughs> and I, I gotta say, I love YA books. There, a lot of times when I need a break, I think, oh, I'm gonna read a YA book. And then like, it's a fast read, but it's not like a break. There's so many like issues. They deal with issues in those books and in a way that's not like talking down to teens at all that I just, I find, teen fiction very refreshingly honest i think that's yeah so i enjoy teen books i don't 
often venture into the one <laughs> the books. Although when I do, I love them. I don't know <laughs> I don't know why I don't do it more often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tends to be my experience too. Like I don't read a lot of YA, but then I will and I'll be like, oh, well that was good. And I always feel like delighted and surprised. But if you, every single time you're delighted, then I should stop being surprised. I think it's just, there's like probably like certain types of it that are not for me. I do not like ones that are like really like romancy, like gushy, you know, gushing over a boy type of thing. And I think you just kind of age out of some of, some of that. Um, but so, and then I'm also not a big fantasy reader and much of YA is, there's a, there's a big chunk that's yeah. fantasy, at least there was for a while. Yeah. But um, I think that now, anytime like my book club or something picks a YA book, generally, as long as it's not a fantasy, I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, it's pretty good. <laughs> and Mary mentioned that they are also refreshingly diverse. Yeah. And that, that is very definitely true. Although you're starting to see a little bit more of that in adult books. <laughs> I think publishers are making strides to um, bring diversity into adult fiction. Slowly. <laughs> well, it seems like we've probably reached the end. Oh, wait a minute. And a recent trend of sh swashbucklers and pirates and ship books. <laughs> and very funny the way things go in trend. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you suddenly have, like, ooh, everyone's on space, or ooh, mm -hmm. everyone's in the future, or ooh. I and think there's, I honestly think that there's a hint, a hit, like a, maybe it's a mini trend, a mini bump, or whatever, about mermaids, too, mm -hmm. as Becky was mentioning. I think I, yeah. see, I see more mermaid books than I've ever seen before. <laughs> Why not? Mermaids yeah, mermaids. yeah. I mean, I spend like zero percent of my brain thinking about mermaids, but more and more, the more books I see, the more I think about it. And the next thing, you, I mean, I because when Becky mentioned that, I was just looking at a mermaid book today, and it wasn't that one. I googled it really quickly while we were doing this. It was a different mermaid book, but um, another one. You know, this kind of dark premise and stuff. And I was like, well, maybe, maybe I should start reading mermaid books now. <laughs> maybe the mermaids are coming to get us. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> Those mermaids are mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. <sighs> All right. Anything else, you know, before we head out for the night? I appreciate everyone who was watching today. And uh, anyone who's watching later, feel free to add to the comments. Um, Becky, maybe you can put in the comments the name of that mermaid book you couldn't remember. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if anyone has book recommendations for us, books that they think were great, leave them in the comments. We'd love to hear your book recommendations too. Yes, we cannot get enough. Yeah. My to be read list is get, just gets longer and longer. I'll, I'll throw it on there. I'll give it a try. <laughs> never ending. I'm never going to get to the end of it. Mm -mm. <laughs> Not unless I get a lot of time off work, Becky. Right. No, ma'am. <laughs> We've talked about that before on here, and you know we've never put Becky on the spot mm -hmm. on video in front You're of right. everyone. Well, we've we talked, talked before. about taking that idea to her, but I don't know yeah. that we did. We think we should get was did we say, say three or did we say five? I think five. I think it was five. Five professional development days a year where we just have the day off to read. Okay, we can take them mm -hmm. at any point. Just call in and say mm, professional development day. Right? I like it because it, it, it is imperative that we be able to talk about books in a way that um is, we know we know what we're talking about and to be able to do that we have to read them so you know, i don't disagree with you it is imperative that you do that but <laughs> but even more imperative than that is that we are able to serve our customers <laughs> so we're open we're able to be open and have enough staff there yeah well, yeah we can do that we won't all take the same day <laughs> But, I was going to say, it might be extra tough on those days where it's like cold and raining outside. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, everyone who works at the library just really mm -hmm. needs to have some day <laughs> yeah. so, There yeah. are some days that are more prone, that, that are made for we reading. Have I would agree. Cold, rainy days. We live in Ohio. There are <laughs> plenty to go around. <laughs> so, you know, think about it professional yeah. development days. 
Yes, feel free to leave your your ideas or your support for our idea in the comments. Marion is all for that idea. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, we'll just leave it there then. Thank you for your advisement. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think you should bring it up with the board. <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for joining us tonight and hopefully we'll see you again sometime soon sometime. at the library. Yeah, the library. there we go. <laughs> Bye guys. Good night. <laughs>